Welcome everyone to CCC Book Club. Masters, let's have a short recap of what has happened so far. For people who don't know what the story is about. So Lopsa is a, is a little boy who joined the Lama City at a very young age. He now, he now has graduated as a Lama which is a little bit like um, a lead, like a leader or um, a little bit higher than a monk. And recently he he's having this big test with like, another examination test to sit to for something. Now let's can let's start reading. Can you see my screen, everyone? Yes. Okay. Should I start from here? This branch, which enables one at the instant of leaving earth life to grasp the greater reality and the abound, abund, abandon the round of rebirth, unless one decided to, decides to come back to earth, Unless one decided to return Earth to Earth for a special purpose, such as help others in some in some particular way, the other forms of yoga could not be discussed in a book of this nature. And certainly, my knowledge of it at the English language is in to quit to justice to such illustrative, illustrious, illustrious subjects. Sorry, Master, if my pronouncers are pronouncing is a little bit bad. So for another five days, I was busy, like a broody hen in a box, but even 10 day long examinations have to come to an end. As the, the Lama collected the last papers on the 10th night, he was greeted with smiles of delight. That night, we had vegetables in a sampa. The very first change from the, this one basic food for 10 days at least. That night, it was easy to sleep. At no time, I would that I, at no time had I worried about passing. But I did worry about the degree of passing. I might come, come, tended to high to be high on the final list. In the morning, the seals were broken from our door, bars were lifted, and we had to clean the examination boxes before we being able to leave. For a week, we were able to recover our strength with a considerable ordeal. Then two days of judo, in which we tried to hold all our hopes and made each other unconscious with the unsteady codes. Two more days were devoted to oral examination on written papers, in which the examiners question about a weak point of view. Let me emphasize that each candidate orally examined for two whole days each. Another week during which we recorded accordingly to a temperance and then the results were announced.
To my noisily expressed joy, I was again on the at the top of the list. My choice was for two th- reasons. I had proved that Lama Mingya Dhanduk was a, the best teacher of all. I knew that Dalai Lama would be pleased with me and my teacher, with my teacher and me, with and with me. Some days later, when Lama Mingya Dhanduk was instructing me in his, in his room, the door was thrust open, painting messenger tongue rolling and eyes staring burst in upon us. In his hands bore the cleft stick of message from the inmost ones, he gasped. To the autumn, honorable medical lama, Tuesday Lobsan Grandpa. Tuesday Lobsan Grandpa. When that he, with that he took from his robe, the letter wrapped in a silken scarf of green, with all speed, honorable must. Honorable sir, I have rushed here. Relieved of his burden, he turned and dashed up even further in, in search of Chang. The message, no, I was not going to open it. It was certainly, it was addressed to me. But what was in it? More studies, more work. It looked very large and very official. So long I had not opened it, no, it not knowing what was inside. So could be blamed for not doing this, that. My thoughts were, my guide, my guide was sitting back laughing at me. So I passed the letter scarf and all to him. He, he took it, opened the envelope or outer wrapping to fold, two folded sheets for inside. He spread open, Reading deliberately, being slow, about to tease me further at last. I was in a field of impatience to know the worst. He said, it's all right. You can breathe again. You have to go to Portala to see him without delay. This, that means now, Lobson. It says here we, I have to go. Well, he touched the gong on to side the he attended who entered he gave instructions that our white horses be saddled immediately quickly we changed our robes selected our best two best white scarves together we went to the abbot and told him that we had to go to the portala to see the inmost one the peak eh he was at the noble linga yesterday. Oh, you must have the letter to say what it is. It must be very official. The courtyard monks, monk grooms were waiting with our horses. We mounted, clattered upon the mountain path, just a little way further. We had to climb up the other mountains. The other mountain, the Portala, which was a very were the first of trying to sit on a horse. The one advantage oh, was the horse coming up, uh, up us up the stairs of the top of the peak. Attendants were waiting for us. As we soon dismounted, uh, our horses were led away, and we hurried to the inmost one's private quarters. I entered alone and made my professions and scarf presentation. Sit down, Lobson. I am very pleased with you. I am pleased and I am very pleased with Mingya and his part in your success. I have read all your in- examination papers myself. That caused a shiver of fight. One of my many feelings. So I have been told is that I, is, I have a somewhat misplaced sense of humor. Sometimes 
it had broken out in in the examination questions because some questions invite the sort of answer. The Dalai Lama read my thoughts for he laughed out right and said, yes, yes, you have a sense of humor at the wrong way, wrong times, but a long pause, which I, which I fear worse than I enjoyed every word. For two long hours, I was doing good. the second hour, my lopsa, my kind was sent for me and the inmost one gave instructions concerning my future dream, my further dream. I was undergo the ceremony of the little death. I was to visit with Lama Mingya Dondo, other Lama series, and I was to study with the brokers of death. And these letters were low. And these letters were a letter was of low cost. Their work of such nature. The Lama, the Dalai Lama gave, gave me a written script in order that I could keep my own status, own status. He called upon the body breakers to render me all and every assistance in order that the secrets of the bodies may be laid bare and the physical reason for bodies being discarded can may be discovered. He is also to take possession of any body or parts of body that he may acquire for his studies. So that was that. Before, before going on to deal with the disposal of dead bodies, it may be advisable to write down about Tibetan views on that. Our attitude is different to rest of Western people. To use a body is nothing more than a shell, a material covering for a immoral soul. To us, a dead body is worse, is worthless than an old worn-out suit of clothes. In the case of a person dying normally, that it is not unexpected violence. We consider the procession to be like this. The body fully details faulty and become so uncomfortable with spirit that it has no further lesson, that no further lessons can be learned. Is, so it is time to discuss. Can you zoom the screen a little? So it is time to discard the body. Gradually, the spirit withdraws and extols outside the flesh body. The spirit form has exactly the same outline as the material version. And it can be cold, clearly be seen by a clairvoyant. The clairvoyant. Voyant. At the moment of death, the cord joining the physical body and the spirit bodies, the silver cord of the Christian ribble thins and parts, and the spirit drifts off. Death then as then taken place, but a life in a birth in, into a new life for which the cord is similar to a umbilical cord, which is served to launch a newborn baby to separate extinguish. At the moment of death, the glow of life force is extinguished, extinguished from the head. The skull can be seen by a clairvoyant, and in the Christian Bible, it is referred to as the golden bull. Not being Christian, I am not familiar with the book, but I believe there is a reference 
reference to the list the silver cord be served and the golden bowl be shattered. Three days we say it is the time for it takes for the body to die, for all physical acti activity to cease, and the spirit's soul or ego to become quite freely of his fleshy envelope. We believe that there is a We believe there is an ether like a double form during the life of a body. This double can become a ghost. Probably everyone looked at a strong light on turning away, apparently, so the light still. We consider that life is electric, a life field of force. An etheric double remaining at death is similar to the light ones after looking at the strong source or in electrical terms it is the like a strong resident magnet field if the body has strong reasons for clinging to life then there was a strong etheric which forms a ghost haunts the familiar scenes a mism have such attachment for his money bags. He has his whole focus on them. And then his last thought was a faint fight concerning the fate of his money. So the dying woman, he had strength to a third. The luckily opened of the money bags may feel somewhat comfortable in the small hours at night. He may feel that old so and so is after his money back again. Yes, is right. It he is right. Old so and so ghost is probably cross, very cross at his spirit, and cannot grip, get a grip on the money. There are three basic bodies of uh, the flesh body in which the spirit can learn hard lessons of life. The etheric or magnetic body, which is made by each of our lust, greeds, and strong passions of various kinds. The third body is the spirit body, the immortal soul. That is a Lamaist Lama belief and not necessarily a orthodox, orthodox Buddhist belief. A person dying has to go through three stages. A phys his physical body being disposed of, his etheric has to be dissolved, and his spirit has to be helped on the road of the, to the world of spirits. Ancient Egyptians also believed in etheric doubles, etheric double. In the Bides of the dead in the world of the spirit. In Tibet, we helped people before they were dead, the adept of such. But an ordinary man or woman or trapper has to be guided the whole way through. It might be interesting to describe what happens. One day, the honorable master of death sent for me. It is the time you studied the practical methods of freeing the soul, ropes, and this day you shall accompany me. We walked down long corridors, down slippery steps into the trapper's quarters, even the hospital room, and an elderly, elderly monk was approaching the road we almost take. It is stroke and was very feeble. His strength was failing, his all the colors were fading as much. At all costs, he had yet to be kept conscious so that there would be no more life to maintain the state. Lama took with me, the Lama took with me 
took the old man to him and gently held him. You are approaching the release from the toils of fresh old man. He'll heed my words, my words. You may choose the easy part, that you might choose the easy part. Your feet grow cold, your mind is, your life is edging closer and closer into its final, final escape. Compose your mind, old man. There is not to fear. Life is leaving your legs and your sight grows dim. Cold is creeping upwards into the wake of morning light. Compose your mind, your mind old man. For there is not Not to feel for in the escape of life, in the greater reality. The shadows of internal night creep upon your sight. Your breath is rasping in your throat. The time goes near for the release of your throat. The time goes near for the release of the, your spirit to enjoy the ple pleasure of your afterworld. Compose yourself, old man. The time of release is near. All the time, the llama all the time was stroking the dying man from the collarbone to the top of his head, which had been proved the way to flee the spill of pain. All the time he had been told to of the pitfalls on the way and how to avoid him. His route was exactly described. His route was mapped of those telepathic llamas who was passed over. Continue to talk over the telepathy even or from the next world. Your sight is gone, old man. Your breath is failing without you, within you. Your body grows cold. Sounds of life are no longer. Fed by your ear. Compose yourself in peace, old man. For your death is now upon you. Follow the route we say, peace and joy will be yours. The stroking continued as the man's aura, old man's aura, began to dimish even more and finally faded away. A similar sharp explosive sound was uttered by in the age of old, age old ritual to completely free the struggling spirit. Above the still life body, the life force gathered in a cloud-like mass, swirling and twisting as in the confusion, then forming into a smoke like a duplicate of a body, which was still attached by the silver cord. And gradually the cord thinned, and the body is born with the umbilical cord is served. As a baby is born when the umbilical cord is sucked, so was the man born in the next life. The cord thinned, a mere wisp and parted, slowly like a drifting cloud in the sky, or incense in a temple. The form glided up. The, the continued, the Lama continued giving instructions by telepathy to follow the spirit on the first stage of, yeah, of its journey. You are dead. There is no more. More for you here. The ties of flesh are released. You are in border. Go your way. We will go out. Follow the route to the sky. Leave this, the world of illusion, and enter the greater reality. Your room. You are dead. Continue your way forward. The clouds of incense rolled up, soothing the troubled air with peaceful vibrations. In the distance, drums were carrying out a rolling mutter from some point on Lamasey Road. A deep dawn trumpet is sent, its message crashing over the country. 
வந்து From the corridors outside came all the sounds of vigorous life, the shh, shh of felt books, and somewhere the grumbling roar of a yell. Here in this room was silence, the silence of death. Only the telepathic instruction of the lama rippled, the silence of the of That only the in the telepathic uh, instructions of Lama ripple of the Lama rippled the solace of the room's quiet. Death, another old man had gone on his round his long round of existence, profiting by the his lessons in this life, maybe. But destiny to continue until he reached Buddhahood by long, long effort. He sat the boy in the colored lotus book and sent for those who prepare the bodies, sent for others to continue the telepathic construction. A departed soul for three days is continued. Three days when the realize of the man's carried out their duties. On the morning of the fourth day, Rai Yabke was disposed of the dead colony, where the Linka road branches to Dainchen Song. With his arrival, the master seized the instruction. The body was given over to the disposer. He doubled it up into a tight circle and wrapped it around in a white cloth. With an easy swing, he lifted the bamboo on his shoulders and strode off. Outside, he had a yak without his station. He left the white, the white mass on the beast's body. Together, they marched off. At the palace of the breaking the corpse carrier would be would hand his burden to the breaker of the box. The place with the place was a desolate this desolate stretch of land dotted with huge boulders containing one large level stone stack large enough to hold the biggest body. At the four corners of the slab, there were holes in the stone, posts driven in. Another stone had another stone slab had holes in it towards half its depth. The bodies were placed upon the slab, the clothes, the cloth stripped off. The arms and the legs of the corpse were tied to the four posts. The head breaker would take his long man, still open the body. Long gashes would made so the, feet, the flesh could be peeled into strips. Then the body and arms would be sliced and, and cut up. The, finally, the head would be cut off, opened. At the first sight of the corpse carrier vultures, who would have come sweeping out of the sky to perch patiently in the box, like a lot of spectators on an open air theater. These birds are a strict social order and attempting to pressure, press some, just one to land before the leaders would result. In a, in a merciless, merciless mobbing. By this time, the body breaker would have the trunk of the torps open. Plunging his hands in captivity, he would bring out. He would bring out the heart, 
at the sight of which the senior Walter would flap heavily to the ground. Well, for what to take the heart from the from the beaker's outstretched line, the next in order board would flap to take the liver. With the in, retire and would retire to the rock to eat. Kidneys and dances were divided and given to the leader of the birds. The, then the strips of flesh were cut up and given to others. One bird came for half of the brain, perhaps one eye, and another, and another would come down for yet another tasty morsel. It had shows surprisingly short time before. All the organs and flesh would be eaten, leaving nothing but bare bones remaining on the slab. The breakers would stab, snap these, these con, convenient sizes like five on it, and put them in the, the put them in the holes of venant sizes like firewood. And, would stuff them in the holes in other in the other slab. Heavy rammers would would then be used to crush the bones into a fine powder. The birds would eat them. The body breakers was highly skilled man. They took their pride in their work. For their own satisfaction, they examined all the body organs to determine the cause of death. Long experience had enabled them to do, to do this with remarkably ease. So there was, of course, no reason, real reason why they should be so interested, but it was a matter of tradition to ascertain the illness, causing the spirit to depart from the vehicle. If the person was poisoned accidentally deliberately. The fact became obvious. Certainly it was found that the of the great benefit to me, I studied with them. I soon became very proficient at dissecting dead bodies. The head breaker would stand beside me and point at features of interest. This audible mama has died of stoppage of blood into the blood. So we will see the utter yes. And yes, here is the car blocking the blood flow. Oh, maybe now this woman, honorable mama, has a peculiar look. A gland there here must be at fault. We will cut and see. There will be a pause while we cut up a good look. Here it is. We will open it. Yes, it has a large core inside. It would go in. All the men were proud to show me all they could. They knew I was studying with them with the direct order of the inmost one. If I was not here, a body looked and a body looked like as it was particularly interesting. They would save it until I arrived. In this way, I would examine hundreds of dead bodies, definitely excelled at surgery later. This was far better training than system where medical llamas to share cadavers in hospital hospital school dissecting rooms. Now I learned more autonomy with the body breakers. They had, I had fully equipped to middle school. Yes. In, in Tibet, bodies cannot be buried to the ground. The work would be too hard because of the rocky soil and the thinness of the earth covering. No dissemination possible on the economic grounds. Would it scarce to burn the body? Timber would have to be imported from India, carried across Tibet on the backs of mountains, on the backs of yaks. Cost would be fantastic. Wood disposal was not permissible either. To cast, to cast bodies into the streams would pollute, pollute 
the drinking water of the living. There is another, a no one dimension then open to us, then air disposal in which described birds would consume the flesh and bones. It differs only from the, from the method in two ways, from Western methods in two ways. Westerners, Westerners bury their bodies and let the birds take the place of the bird. Take the place of the birds. Worms take the place of the birds. The second difference is that the Western knowledge of the cause of death is buried with the body. And no one knows if the death certificate is real, really as stated as the root cause. A body breakers made sure they know what the person died. Masters, I will stop here. Um, does anyone have a question or feedback? Please raise your hand. Good. Mukun, can you unmute yourself? Um, well done, Joshua. Um, I think you did very well. Um, um, that's um good job, and also your pronunciation was good. And on my favorite part, it was like when he was releasing the spirit of the old man. I don't know why, but I like this creepy stuff. You read from my friend. Yeah, but most of the story, I think, was pretty gruesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Little, do you have feedback or questions? Yeah, Joshi has explained it very well. And uh, at middle, I actually had some interview question. Uh, I do not have any favorite part. What, could you repeat that, Hedo? I actually at middle I had internet issue I think. That's why uh, at the first I had internet issue, then I, it was okay. I'm not able to hear you. Hello? I'm not able to hear you. Aradhyan, uh, do you have any feedback or questions? Not Aradhyan. My name is Aradhyan. Aradhyan? Always asking when you are asking me a question, you say that. Sorry. Okay. So, I don't like this creepy thing. So, this story was nice. Yeah. Um, but, Joshua, uh, can now, I hear you? Yeah, I can't. Hello? Now, yeah, I can hear you. I think it's uh, like glitching. That's why you can't hear me sometimes. Okay. Um, I'll stop recording, Masters, now. Bye, everyone.